<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Lee Twine TV. I'm your host, the Grim Reaper, Mark Fusco, here for Monster Chiller Thriller 6. Oh, Wine 6. Oh, I screwed it up. Anyway, six year of the episode for Halloween. Uh, it's after midnight. Actually, it's after one o'clock in the morning now. So we are in the witching hour, so to speak. And uh, I have three spooky wines for us to try today. Uh, I bought them all at um, Not World Market for once. I bought them all at Total Wine and more. Kind of the new favorite local, uh, you know, national wine shop or, or large, larger chain wine shop for me. So. Um, uh, we got three wines, uh, all of uh, two are screw cap ones, like you know, crappy corks. So no Coravin today. So uh, I got to make sure I drink these wines. Thank goodness I'm off the next two days. I had a four day weekend. I'm in the day two of it, and um, yeah, traditionally record it late. So um, as you probably have noticed, we haven't had an episode for a couple weeks um, with the vacation and all that. I didn't do it. Um, I'm actually going to probably record some episodes next week. Um, I mean, true next week. Oh, we'll record some episodes after this, and uh, that way I have some episodes following Halloween. So we have uh, one, two, three ish weeks. I also have to come up with a Thanksgiving episode. I haven't even thought of the wines yet. So, uh, but I'm taking a vacation in November. Pretty much not going to do much. I mean, I'm not going to go to Napa like I did last year. Uh, I know some, some of my father's friends are coming in town, first part of November, then I go on vacation, so uh, looking forward to all that. Should be a busy, kind of a busy November on the personal life. So hopefully bef the week before Halloween, or the week of Halloween, depending on how my schedule is, I'll get the rest of the uh, episodes uh, recorded. Now, um, so let's, let's get into the wines here. So the first wine that I have, um, and I have pictures of these of these labels, so I'm not going to worry about trying to to show it off. Give myself a nice healthy pour, and remind myself to not swirl the wine because it's going to fly out. Um, yeah, this is non-vintage, isn't it? I think all these are not. No, actually, the first one's on vintage. So this is the non-vintage um, Raycos. Well, actually, when you look at their when you go to their website and all that, the little the S has a little, you know squiggly underneath it. So I think it, that, that means you pronounce it like a shuh? I don't know. So we'll try that. The Raykush. Um, Fetiaska. Fetiaska Regala. Yeah. So where in the world is this from? This is from Romania. That's right. So when I went to um, went to Total Wine, I, you know, I, I found you know, the first one I found was one I've been wanting to do for a while. Then I found another one that had a little Halloween, you know, uh, display going on. And then I was looking for a white wine because, you know, Halloween red wines are really easy to find. So I said, I'd like to get a Halloween themed wine. And the lady's like, well, how about blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I've already done it. I can't remember. Oh, the, the Black Cat Riesling. So well, I've already done that one. She's on the radio with somebody. And uh, so the guy says, well, how about, I, I, I couldn't hear what he said. So she brings me over here and he goes, this, she's this from Transylvania. I'm like, perfect. And I go, what's with the grapes? Well, I think it's, but well, she gave me some like international varietals. So, so it's not really from Romania, Romanian grapes. No, I don't think so. I'll look it up. Sure enough, what I just said, the Fediasca. Ooh, did I say it right? Fediasca Regala. That is the name of the grape. Okay. So um, anyway, so, and then doing research, found out that this one is actually not from Transylvania. It is from Romania. So real quick, uh, it's $6.99. Um, it is a white grape variety created in the 1930s in Muresh, because it has a little, little squiggly under the S, uh, or the Muresh Mures County uh, in Romania. It's a natural crossing of Grasa and uh, Fediasca Alba. Okay, so basically, you know, another, you know, uh, uh, a crossing of actual native grapes in Romania. Uh, it's cultivated in mainly Romania and Transylvania, Moldavia, Moldova, also in Hungary and Austria. 
That might be where they got the whole thing. It's from Transylvania. But, um, uh, and then underneath says Alb Demisec. So, um, you know, Alb white and then Demisec, you know, half dry. So this may be a semi-sweet wine or maybe just slightly sweet. Um, and real quick, uh, Romanian is one of the Romance languages based on Latin. If you didn't know that, you know that now. All right, uh, so anyway, so what about this place? So, um, so starting, there, there are documents that say that the, the Rekas, or the Rekas, or Rekas, or Rekas, or whatever, we'll say Rekas for now, um, began in 1447. Um, and it was held by the treasure house. I'm going to say, I guess the treasury. You have to realize it's translated from Romanian into English from some of the places I got this from. Of the Banat Museum with the central headquarters in the Cuniad Castle of Timisoara. Timisoara. So, um, real quick. So, Banat is the region in... Uh, Romania just comes from. It's the western part of Romania. Um, Timis or Timish? No, actually, I think I think it is Timis. Timis is the county, and then um, Rekas is the town. Okay, so anyway, um, certifies that uh, Mihail the uh, Kiorna, ruler of Severin, which is another area in that area, bought the grapevines from here from the aristocrats' loan and some other. Uh, Ekaterina Magar for 32 de Florence, the Hungarian gold coin which is used at the time. Now, so, okay, so how's this, how's this, you know, a freaking um, Halloween wine? Well, it almost wasn't. I was going to wait till next week to record this episode, but did a lot of digging. I actually complained to Total Wine in a direct message on Twitter saying, hey man, you guys are selling us this Transylvania wine and it's not from Transylvania. It's still not. But Vlad the Impaler, the original Dracula, reigned in the area um, on and off from 1448 to 1476. Um, anyway, the, uh, the grapevines from the area have changed owners, passing hands from Hungarians, Austri Austrians, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I won't go through all that, but basically a bunch of people came through this area. A bunch of different, you know, central and eastern European peoples came through and conquered and blah 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 as what happened you know for all, all that time. Um, so the company known today under the name of Rekas Winery began its activity at the end of the 20th century, I love how they put XX century, uh, with the ambition to take over the tradition and culture inherited from the wine artisans from the ancient vineyard um, but also to add professionalism blah, blah, blah. so they're trying to invest it and all that. Um, it is Romanian and British partners that manage it, and they have approximately 1,100 hectares of grapevine in Timis or Timish County, and Minas Arad County. Um, so Minas, I guess, is another another town, and is found at the top. Of, they say they're a top quality wine producer. All right, so that's your that's your um, little bit of Romanian wine history. The other two wines aren't as interesting. Anyway, so let's check it out. No swirling, no spit, no spit bucket. Hi, Horatio, how you doing? Would you like a little bit of wine? Oh yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Now I'm doing this room temperature, so didn't chill it or anything. I forgot to sniff it. It tastes, it tastes really good, actually. I mean, dude, it's like a $7 bottle of wine. How come I'm not drinking more of these? You know, in the profession I'm in and have been for a little while, but you know, in all the wine studies, you do, you do tend to all of a sudden start, you know, if you, have, if you have access to more expensive wines, you start drinking more expensive wines. But man, let me tell you, this is, this is nice. Um, on the nose, you know, I don't get a whole lot on the nose. Um, it smells like a white wine, but it's just kind of generic white wine. Um, you know, the fact that I can't really swirl it may hurt, but I don't think it really does. No, but we're going to try it. We're going to taste it again. 
that first sip you'll get that out of the way. So if I had this wine blind, I would maybe think it's a Chardonnay. May like like actually I would, would I'd probably consider this a New World wine. I don't know why, but it's very high in acid. Um, it's kind of got a sweet tart uh, flavor to it. Um, not it, not grainy, not chalky, but like it's like I had a sweet tart. Um, very lemony, limey type stuff, um, citrusy. Um, I could think this was maybe some kind of Sauvignon Blanc, maybe some kind of Pinot Grigio. You know, I would I would probably go in those directions because of the acidity from it. Um, or I would think it's a, a very acidic ca uh, Chardonnay that's trying to be, you know, that's not in a, um, you know, did not go through malolactic and didn't have a lot of oak and all that. I really don't know what they do to this wine. Um, I don't know. E even on the winery page, it was hard to find stuff. Plus, the pictures look different. So this is the castle um, line of their wines, which is kind of their, I think it's kind of, not their higher end, but not their low end. Um, but the label looks different. Now, I don't know if it's just this is maybe an older, even though it's non-vintage, maybe an older release. This is the old label, and they haven't put the new label on the website, or the other way around. Because, man, you, don't never, you never know how often these websites get um, updated. But... Yeah, really nothing on the nose, but I mean, it's easy drinking. If you're having a Halloween party and, you, and somebody likes white wine, this is cheap. It tastes good. You put a little chill to it. It's not sweet. I know it says demi sec, and demi sec isn't necessarily a sweet. Doesn't necessarily mean it's sweet, but it gives you an impression it might have a little bit of residual sugar to it. Um, I mean, it might. It's not bone dry, let's put it that way, okay? But it's really easy drinking, and you're not gonna go wrong. <laughs> and dude, it's from frickin' Romania. Dracula came from there. I mean, this was next door to Transylvania. Dracula, you know, Vlad ruled over this area and Transylvania, he, this, this was his domain. Oh yeah, I forgot what it was called. I thought I put it down here on my notes, like Wallach. W-A-L-L-A-C-H, I think that's what it was called. You know what? I didn't put it in my notes. But yeah, that was the um, um, that was the, the name of the area. So it included Transylvania and it included uh, Batan, I think that's what it was. You know what? I should memorize these things a little bit better. Anyway, um, so he ruled the area. And uh, that's, that's why I decided to still do the wine. Otherwise, I would have been like, man, I guess I'll just review the wine like as a regular you know, wine review and then find another white wine to get you know, the next couple days. But this is good, I like it. The return of the goblet. All right, just so it's easier to get to the next wine. All right, so the next wine. Do I want to go in this order? Yeah, I'm going to go in this order next. All right. The next wine is the non-vintage Witching Hour. Yeah. Deep Red Blend for $9.99. $9.99. Oh, Reserve from California. 2013. So 999 999 999 um, from Total Wine and More. Woo! Nice healthy pour. Watch the Thursday night football game. My fantasy player didn't do very well for New Orleans. CJ Spiller didn't do. But the tight end like had a career night. At least the guy I'm playing against, he had another, he had a um, I think cook or cooks or whatever. He didn't have that great of a night either, so it didn't hurt. But anyway, um, so yeah, red blend. Don't know what it is. 
can't find any information on it. Um, they have a website on the back of their of their um, bottle. It says witchinghourwines.com. Never came up. Trying to find Witching Hour Vineyards in Livermore, California. Nothing comes up. So, another one of those phantom... <laughs> Kill myself. I slay myself. Another phantom winery, you know. So, a bunch of bulk juice that got put together. Let's put it out for Halloween call it Witching Hour, right? Of course, they have, enough, have to have enough time to get the TTB to approve the label and all that stuff. So, it's not like they put it together last week. All right, so let's smell it. Okay, um, red wine. Uh, plumish, prunish type of stuff. Not stewed, but, but pruny, plummy. Um, other red fruits, nothing but no hints of spices or any of that stuff. Again, I'm not swirling it. I mean, because you know the the it's a goblet and it angles out that way, so I'll get I'll get all the stuff all over the place. not bring the spit bucket it's it's generic yeah it's kind of tannic really coats the mouth it's very much candy fied it's like a bunch of prunes in my mouth maybe some figs there's a little bit of a silver lining there again first sip First pour, first sip. Let's just give it a little shot here. Maybe it's not that bad. Ugh. No, I don't recommend it. I haven't had a not recommend wine in a while. Don't recommend it. I gotta finish this. You know what feels like drinking this? It feels like you've been drinking wine all night and you're really kind of done drinking and you have that like oh, nasty feeling, but you're gonna drink the rest of the wine because you're at the party and you're, you know, dang it, you're gonna finish this wine. And you're like, if I drink another sip, I'm gonna hurl. I, I hate to give this wine that bad of a review, but it's just I don't like it. I don't I don't I don't like it. I'm sure there's some people out there that are gonna like it. It's ten bucks, it's cheap. At a party, probably nobody would notice a difference. They'd probably go, oh, it's cheap wine, and they would drink it and get drunk and you know, do whatever, and it'd be fine. And it'd be like cool witching hour, blah blah blah. You know, but to buy it outside of that context, if I was just gonna buy it, just have it at the house, no. No. No, not at all. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I've cued in the uh, Price is Right horns or not, but like I used to do, if I gave something like under a 70, I used to do the So maybe I just did it then, I don't know. Problem is now that um, I still have to send the thing and the contract, blah blah blah. But the everything's been finalized and the stuff I talked about earlier with um, Maker. Um, I'm trying to avoid any type of copyrighted stuff. Not that I had a lot of copy. Oh, not that I had a lot of copyrighted stuff to begin with on the sh you know on the show. But I want to avoid any more of that. Which you know, hey, it's kind of funny though. All right. So I'm just pouring the wine. All right, the next wine. This is. Oh, did I? I don't remember if there was a vintage on this. I think this is also non-vintage. This witching hour. Oh no, it's 2013. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you the vintage on it. Anyway, this is the 2012 Hobnob Vineyards Wicked. 
red blend. Limited edition. Now, if you go to their website, you won't see the little, the little skull thing here. You'll just see it just has a generic label. Now, this wine, and of course, I also got it at Total Wine, um, paid $8.99 for it. Now, I got a little bit of information on this one. I should say I didn't have anything. So, um, this wine is actually created by uh, Deutsche Family uh, Wines out of New York. Uh, in Le Vigne Georges de Boeuf, in response to a consumer need among young adults for a fun and approachable yet stylish and sophisticated brand that reflects their social networking style, blah, 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 okay. Uh, and feeling of being the center of it all. Hobnob is kind of, they actually have the definition on the back, so I'll just read it from the back. Um, two people or more drinking to each other, uh, through the clinking of glasses and rubbing of elbows in toast and celebration. Uh, and then it says, to associate familiarity, chum around, uh, an informal sociable meeting or get together, a gathering party hybrid. And then the fourth one is talking about the wine being perfect. Um, so hobnob. Now, so this wine is from France. It just says product of France. Actually, it, it might even have, it's pay doc. It's a pay doc wine. And so it could be pretty much anywhere. Uh, but red table wine. Uh, don't know what the grapes are, just like the other one. Don't know what the grapes are. This is a blend. It could be anything. Um, the, the winery or the, the wine brand started in 2007, okay? Um, and if you go to Hobnob Vineyards or Wine Company or whatever, the website, it shows that it's in White Plains, New York, um, which is where Deutsch Family is also located, which is also the Serenity Wine Imports, which is where Total Wine gets a lot of their winery direct wines. So, so it, it's not as much of a, like, phantom winery as, as Witch Hunt or Witching Hour or whatever, but... I'm gonna say there's no like special winery in France. And they make other wines. I think they actually have source wines from all over. So um, anyway, that's the info on that. I'm gonna turn that off. So I didn't really want to try this because you know, it's, it always, you always see it in the Halloween time. It's got the little skull on it. I was like, all right, let's try it out, okay? All right, well, kind of something on the nose. I mean, red fruit, no spices, maybe a hint of vanilla, but not, not a whole lot of those. Let's see how it tastes. Let's try the second sip. Well, it's more palatable, palatable than the Witching Hour one. It's got, again, got some tannins. It's got more of cherry and raspberry red fruits rather than the plum and prune. Um, so it's got brighter red fruits to it. Um, maybe a little, a little bit more complexity, you know, might have some cedar box to it. So there's something to it. You know, I think, I think the witching hour wine kind of like destroyed me. It's more palatable. I'm not gonna rush to dump it down the drain. Um, I might actually try to drink it tomorrow in a different setting, give it, you know, maybe not have the nastiness of the last wine still like in my stomach. Um, but you know, a lot of times at the end of these reviews, especially if I, if I do stay up late, but I don't have to be anywhere the next day, if it's my day off still, you know, I'll. Especially like these level ones where I can't core in them, I'll like drink 
I'll drink wine while I'm like putting the videos together, uploading and all that. I'm not gonna be drinking this one tonight. Definitely not the witch hunt. I'll probably end up drinking the white wine because it's actually pretty delicious. It's pretty good. It's the cheapest of the three. I think it's the best made of the three. I think it has the best flavors of the three. Um, wow, this was a really disappointing Halloween episode. Um, I, I know I've had some other episodes where I had some wines that didn't really knock it out of the park. Um, but yeah, one for three as, as in only one wine out of three was like, yes, please buy it. Um, don't buy the Witching Hour. You can buy the Hobnob. Again, it'll be like if you're at a party, you need to bring some wine. You know, if you're hosting the party, you need some wine for your party and you need to go on the cheap and buy, you know, six bottles or a case of it, you know, whatever. Especially as you get to later and later in the night, people are not going to care. That's why I always drink with the, drink the good stuff first. Then you, then you end with the not so great stuff um, because by then people's palates are destroyed and they don't care and they're drunk and they can't evaluate one anyway. Wow, disappointing. I'm really sorry. Um, you know, there are other wines I actually had in my little list of things to do. I mean, there's there's like, I think one or two more wines that, have, that are always on that, I know I'm gonna do it this year list. And then I'm like, ah, I get distracted by shiny and I go and get something else. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Let's try one more time. Yeah, um, not so much, not so much. Oh well. Now I get the light on my face. Anyway. <laughs> hey, I like doing the evil laugh. That one wasn't a good one. Anyway, um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, buy the white wine from Romania. The other two, I'm gonna say pass and I haven't had that in a while. So, um, all right, so that's that's it. That's it. We have a couple more weeks, two, three weeks, then we have Thanksgiving. I'll have a Thanksgiving episode. Of course, I'll have Christmas, I'll have New Year's, I'll have other wines to review. I still have some more Psalm Select wines to review, and then I got some other wines to review, and then, um, then we got the new year. And then I've got some people asking me if I want to get samples of stuff. Yay! Um, I still have I still have a sample I have to do. Um, I might, you know what, I may just hold on to that. This is sparkling wine. I may just hold on to that till Christmas. Make one of my sparkling wine suggestions. Um, it was just easier instead of just like a straight up like, hey, I'm reviewing a sparkling wine. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, I expect to have a, a book soon. The Wine Bible is being sent to me um, so I can re peruse it. Uh, I'm not gonna do necessarily a video review of the, of the book. But I'll definitely look it over and it'll be somewhat of a subject of one of my episodes. It would be really great to have the author on. Hint, hint, if someone's watching this that knows the author and the publishing, to do a Skype interview. I kind of mentioned that in the email. I'd like to do, you know, interviews, but, you know. Anyway, uh, so I have that coming and uh, that's, that's going to do it. As always, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over here, not the light that's over there. Woo! 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 Anyway. <laughs> I think that's... Uh, yep, that should be the edge of the, uh, of the, of the green screen. Anyway, um, so click the links above. Hit the button over there or down there, whatever. Leave some comments below. Uh, again, thank you for coming by. And uh, we will see everyone again next time. You already are home. Go drink some wine.